I have this small print that I print on the Bamboo Lab P1S, and I print hundreds every week. But I was asked, could I print a lot more? But the problem is, anytime I print more than 81 on the bed of the P1S, I get this mess. I needed to find a way that I could print more at one time, and I found it. And I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I love the quality I get out of the P1S and the dimensional accuracy is actually pretty good. I had to upsize 101%, but this machine has been really reliable and it works really well. So printing hundreds of these at a time was not a problem. And I printed them in this arrangement here where I had a nine by nine in the center of the bed, which gave me 81 pieces. And I just used the standard settings and it worked pretty well. 55 degrees on the bed, and everything stuck and they were easy to remove after everything cooled off. Now I knew I wasn't using the full size of the bed but when I went bigger than this 9x9 nine nine, I always seemed to notice a problem. There would be a print that wouldn't stick and that would affect another print. But I was meeting the demand with what I was doing so I really wasn't worried the fact I wasn't fully using the bed on the P1S. But then that all changed. They asked me if once in a while if they could give me a bigger order and would I be able to do it on the same machine. Now my first thought was buy a couple more printers, but they can't guarantee this big volume all the time. And it's not within my budget to afford two more machines if they're not going to help pay for it. So this forced me to stop being lazy and figure this problem out. This thing should be able to print much bigger than what I'm doing. Because after all, the amount of space I'm using isn't any bigger than the bed of an A1 Mini. So I took the same layout and then I just added pieces around the outside of it to give me exactly 100 pieces. The only thing I did is I took one out of the corner here to make it an actual 100 even. And I used the same bed temperature, which I'm suspecting may be too low. And when I printed, I got the same crap. I got pieces popping off, hitting other pieces. I lost too many. Now I do clean the bed often, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. So I looked it up again how best to clean a textured PEI. And it said soapy water. And that's what I do. And I use Dawn because that cuts through the grease. So I cleaned the bed again, and this time I'm going to change it to 65 degrees C and see if things get better. And it was better, but not good enough. You can see how it starts on the outside and spreads to the inside like a plague, taking out pieces. I ended up losing 22, which left me with 78 good ones, which was three less than I was getting with the smaller bed area. Now I heard that people were getting really good results with this new BQ bed material. So I went on to Amazon and I found it. The BQ Cryo Grip Pro Glacier in a bed size that fit the P1S. So I bought one to try it out. So I went back to that 100 piece test layout. Only this time I lowered the temperature to 55 degrees C because I wanted to see how good this bed really was. The first couple of layers looked promising but I said let's wait until it prints. Well, zero failures, 100 perfect parts. They stuck to the bed, they looked great, but the only thing left, how easy are they to remove? I let it cool for just a couple minutes and they slid right off into the box. This was perfect. So I made a new layout, 13 by 13, to give me 169, more than double what I was doing before, and it filled the bed. And then when it started printing, the first layer, it was all sticking, looking good, and when it finished, all 169 passed. And the nice thing is, is I can't be there to empty this thing on a regular basis. I have a day job, I'm doing other things. So the fact that it's gonna take longer to print, I don't care. It's just, I come back and I've got 169 ready to go. I can print the next one, I can print them overnight. So I told them I can probably print more of what they need if they just give me a little more time. Now they also have one for the A1 Mini and it's cheaper. And I've had some issues with my A1 Mini recently, so I'm going to get one of these as well. After this experience, I wanted one for my K1 Max. My K1 Max, even with a PEI texture bed, it gave me the blob again. I need to repair this. So I want one for the K1 Max and they didn't have it. Well, until recently. They announced over the Christmas break, they now have it for the K1 Max and a few other printers. So I told them I can help them out right now, but if they're going to need thousands on a regular basis, I suggest they go to PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is where I get circuit boards, but they also have a 3D printing service. Just click on 3D printing, go down to their page, 
upload or drag and drop your .stl file and it will give you a quote. You just need to tell it what material you want to use. PLA and I'm going to use black just like before, 40% infill and there's a few other things you could fill out but it's going to give you a quote and you can buy just one course it's going to cost a lot more but you can order thousands and then you got to get a quote for that but there's a lot of options here so if you have a high volume print that you need i suggest you check out pcbway.com if you want to try out this bq bed it fits the a1 it fits the p1s and it also fits the x1c i'll put a link to it in the description below this is an affiliate link so it does help out the channel but they didn't sponsor this, they didn't give it to me. I bought it on my own, and I'm glad I did because it solved my problem. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.